When I went to New York earlier this year in January, I had many meetings planned with various artists and collectors. Uh, but the most exciting one in the diary was my first trip to William Wegman's studio down in Chelsea. Wegman is something of a legend in New York artistic circles and has been at the forefront of, of artistic invention there for over 40 years, so I was, I was thrilled to be invited to meet him at his studio. Here was clearly an artist brimming with ideas and, and engaging in both his photography and painting with a sort of feverish energy. And I felt that it was one of the most dynamic creative environments that I'd experienced. Which is no surprise, as to visit Wegman's studio in New York is to visit a New York institution. Like Andy Warhol or Keith Haring, Wegman is a quintessential New York artist, despite actually emanating from California in the early 1970s, where he was intimately connected with the burgeoning conceptual art scene there. This important contribution was honoured earlier this year with an exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, in which Wegman's videos were juxtaposed with other giants from the period. It goes without saying that we're thrilled to host our first exhibition of Wegman's photographs here at the Gallery in London. For an artist who is so internationally renowned, it's, it's been surprising to me how little of his work has been shown here in the United Kingdom. For our first exhibition, we're focusing on a particular series of work that Wegman made over 28 years of his career. His early photographs were grainy, lo-fi, black and white. But this all changed in 1978, when he was given a camera by the Polaroid Corporation. But it wasn't an ordinary Polaroid camera. It was a huge and experimental 20 by 24 inch machine which produced equivalently large, rich, tonal colour photographs. In the same way that the more domestic Polaroid cameras did for us uh, before digital drove them out of business. Due to their large size, each print has a sort of extreme clarity. They're facsimiles of nature. Wegman was always a bit wary of using colour, but this camera that he was given changed things for him. The subject matter of these photographs is, of course, Wegman's Weimaraners, a motif that he developed in the late 1970s by interacting with his dog at the time, Man Ray. Man Ray initially attempted to disrupt Wegman's artistic practice before quickly being absorbed into it in a way that made both of them internationally famous. The early black and white photographs and videos of Man Ray are exquisitely comic and are designed to sort of self-reference and, and parody the conceptual art that Wegman and his friends were making at the time. You've got uh, P-A-R-K was spelled correctly, and that was good. Oh, wait a minute. And you spelled uh, O-U-T right, but when it came to beach, you spelt it B-E-E-C-H. Wegman's later Polaroid photographs of his dogs are of course charming and playful, uh, but they have a sort of more serious underlying purpose that makes us question the, the nature of portraiture and the way that we represent ourselves in photographic images. They also continue to investigate the themes that he developed in the 1970s that set about lampooning the serious and introspective nature of conceptual art at the time. I do hope you get a chance to come along and, and view the exhibition. It's quite unlike anything we've ever had in the gallery, in terms of both subject matter and object. Each print is, of course, unique, which gives the work that we have on display in the exhibition a sort of rarity that's not often associated with photographs. They are extraordinarily beguiling things, and I look forward to seeing you.